Hello everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and in this video I'm doing the bookshelf time capsule tag which was originally created by Jesse the Reader. I'll link his video down below. But yeah, prompt number one is just tell us a little bit about your shelves. So I got my shelves four years ago from Menards. These are the first bookshelves I ever bought myself so that was very exciting. As a kid growing up I just always had very plain cheap brown shelves, which was fine. I was very thankful for them, but I was definitely very excited as an adult to get to pick out my own shelves that was an aesthetic that was pleasing for me. So I knew that I wanted pretty white shelves and I knew that I wanted to have like square shelves. I really liked the look of like little contained squares. Now that I have them, it's a little bit difficult because they are so small so it's hard to fit books that I have a lot in a single category of because I do like to keep each shelf on some sort of a organizational theme. So now that I've had these for a while I do think the next shelves I purchase, in addition to these I won't be replacing these, I'm gonna need more shelves eventually, uh, but I think those will be more traditional wider rectangular shelves just for space spacing purposes. <laughs> so prompt number two is what is your favorite shelf? And my favorite shelf is my Peter Pan shelf. I don't have a lot of shelves with books facing out. The only other one I have is my fantasy shelf with my first inheritance cycle book facing out. But this Peter Pan shelf has two books facing out and I really love the cover on both of them. I think the cover of Tiger Lily is beautiful and I love the artwork from Fairy Dust and the Quest for the Egg so I love that that's facing out. And I do like Peter Pan quite a bit so aesthetically and the fact that Peter Pan is a favorite for me makes the Peter Pan shelf my favorite shelf. Also, they fit nicely within the square. Like obviously my Harry Potter shelf would be a contender for a favorite shelf, but I just have so many Harry Potter books and decor that that shelf, the little square is just not big enough to show it off in the way that I would like to. So I think Harry Potter is one of the book series that's gonna be moving on to a rectangular shelf when I get them someday. <laughs> Whereas Peter Pan will probably stay on these square shelves because they fit so perfectly. Prompt number three is do you keep every single book you read or do you ditch the ones that you don't enjoy? And I kind of laughed out loud at this question because I do not know who possibly has the space to keep every single book that they read. Certainly not me. So I do get rid of books that I don't enjoy. Sometimes I'll keep books that were kind of okay if they fit nicely on the shelves, but once they don't fit anymore, they get moved off and gotten rid of. Prompt number four is, do you have an organizational method? What is it? And also, is there a different organizational method that you would like to try? I do kind of have an organizational method, but it's not like super specific. It's kind of chaotic and probably only I, not only I would understand it, but like, it's specific to me. <laughs> a lot of my method is just kind of grouping books by genre. Like I have two kind of YA shelves here, I have my fantasy shelf, etc. Sometimes it goes by author. I've got my John Green shelf, which is actually now my Green Brothers shelf because Hank is an author now too. And other times it's by like series, like Harry Potter has an entire shelf to itself. And then Peter Pan, I have enough like kind of Peter Pan reimaginings to allow Peter Pan to have its own shelf. <laughs> so that's kind of how I organize the shelves. And then from there it's kind of a favorite to least favorite kind of a situation as a whole and then within like individual shelves. So you know the Green Brothers I've got top left because John Green is my favorite author so I want him to have like what in my mind is a prominent spot. <laughs> so he's like the first shelf on this shelf. And then same goes for Harry Potter being on the top left on the tall shelf. So that's kind of how I organize the bookshelves at large. And then even individually I tend to try to do favorite to least favorite. So using John as an example again, I've got, you know, Fault in Our Stars on the left because it's my favorite and going down the line all the way down to Turtles all the way down. <laughs> so that's kind of my 
chaotic organizational method that feels good for me. For me, the most tempting other kind of organizational method would be rainbow shelves, but I don't think I would actually enjoy it because then you end up separating series and authors and things like that, and I do like having those things together. And then also I just don't really have good shelves for rainbow shelving. Again, the more traditional rectangular shelves are much better for a rainbow shelf setup than these little cubes are, especially since both of the shelves are relatively small and one's tall and one's short. It just wouldn't work for me even though I do love the way it looks. Maybe I'll try it out for a little while one day if I ever get my rectangular shelves. But again, I think having series separated from each other would end up just bothering me too much anyways. Prompt number five is how often do you reorganize your shelves and what is your method for reorganizing? And I almost never reorganize my shelves. I mostly just add new books as I read them and if I like them enough to keep them I'll just find where I feel like they belong on the shelves as they are. Sometimes that will lead to like a slight reorganization of the individual shelf that that book ends up on, but as far as big reorganizing, almost never do that. The last time I did a big reorganization was when I moved into this house and I bought these new shelves. And then yeah, my method for doing that reorganization was to just kind of figure it out, look at the books that I had and figure out where I wanted them to go. Again, I kind of already explained my organizational system and so that kind of led the process of reorganizing. Like obviously looking at my books, I knew John Green gets his own shelf and it's gonna be like a shelf that in my mind is like a prominent shelf. And then yeah, as you start to fill in the ones that like you know kind of where you want them, like the Harry Potter books, I obviously knew I wanted them at the top left, big prominent position then, you know, you just kind of fill in the less prominent books and into the spaces that they fit best. <laughs> oh, and I just realized I skipped a prompt. So going back, don't know what number this would have been. Uh, what do you do when your shelves fill up? And yeah, I just kind of have to look at the books that are on the shelf that's filling up. Because again, I go kind of by individual shelves on this. But yeah, once a shelf starts to fill up, I just kind of have to look at what's on it and figure out like which books am I okay with parting with? Which books on this shelf do I like the least? Or if I'm not willing to part with any of the books on the shelf, I might look at like moving some books from a more full shelf to a different shelf that is less full but that is also difficult because I do try very hard to keep a shelf as being like one genre or whatever. And so I don't necessarily want to move a YA contemporary book to a fantasy shelf. But I am having to do that more and more recently because these shelves are starting to fill up. <laughs> Prompt number six is which shelf on your bookshelf bothers you the most? And none of my shelves really bother me. I do like how I have them all set up right now. Some of them are starting to kind of fill up, which is worrisome, but none of them bother me yet. So I guess if I had to pick one, I would probably just pick the one that's like on the bottom right down here, which is a little bit kind of my junk shelf. It's got some like books that I've written myself. It's got nonfiction books. It is a little bit of like an overflow shelf, but because it is books that I don't care about as much, I don't, I don't care about my nonfiction books as much. It doesn't really bother me and I still don't think it looks bad. Like it's still, organized fairly nicely even though it is the shelf that has the most books on it. <laughs> Prompt number seven is what color dominates your shelves? And I don't feel like my shelves are really dominated by any particular color of book. I would say if anything I just feel like I don't really have very many like bright books that pop on the shelves. Like I feel like some people's shelves have very bright books. A lot of times people who organize in the rainbow way their shelves do end up looking very bright and pretty. 
which I wish my shelves were a little bit more like that. So yeah, if, I would say if any color stands out, it's a lack of bright colors. <laughs> like I feel like my two Hank books are like two of my brightest books on my shelves. Prompt number eight is what is the most damaged book on your shelf and how did it get that way? And I do like to keep my books looking quite nice. I'm not rough with my books. So I don't have any like very damaged books. So I guess if I had to pick one, it would probably be The Last Book of the Universe by Rodman Philbrick, in which I have had to tape up the sides to keep the cover attached. Um, and that's just old age. I've just had this book since I was like eight years old or something. So and I've read it like a million times. Prompt number nine is do you have any books on your shelves with major printing errors? And I do not. Jesse in his video talked about like the acknowledgments on one of his books or something being printed upside down. I don't have any extreme things like that. I think it would actually be kind of cool if I did, but I don't. Prompt number 10 is which book on your shelf has the ugliest spine? And I don't really feel like any of the spines of my books are ugly per se. I feel bad. I'm gonna pick a uh, self-published one. I feel bad to pick a self-published one. But I mean the spine on this one is just very plain because it is self-published. So this is like my plainest spine I guess. <laughs> Prompt number 11 is what are your dream shelves? And I kind of have my dream shelves. When I moved in here I bought kind of my dream office setup. I got a really nice big white desk. I got these beautiful shelves. And so this is kind of my dream setup. Um, the only thing I would change is I'm starting to get to the point where I need more shelves and I would like my next set, like I said, to be big wide rectangles so that I can fit lots of books on one shelf. <laughs> Prompt number 12 is what is the tallest book on your shelves? And that would probably be all of the books in the Cormoran Strike series by JK Rowling. These books are big hardbacks and so yeah they are the tallest. The only other book I have that would be taller than these is my Hamilton book but I don't keep that on my shelves. I keep that out in the living room. In this video I'm just talking about these shelves because these are what I think of as like my official bookshelves. Which is why I'm also not talking about any of my TBR shelves of which I have some that are just like built into the closet of the house and a book cart. Prompt number 13 is what is the shortest book on your shelves? And that is Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbotsky. This book is very tiny in all ways. <laughs> Prompt number 14 is which book is your most prized book? And for me that is probably my leather bound edition of the second Harry Potter book. This is like the fanciest special edition book that I have. It's one of the few special editions that I have and it's a Harry Potter book. So those are always favorites obviously for me. And finally prompt number 15 is what book on your shelves slips you back in time and puts you in a specific moment, time, or place? And for me that is Matched by Ali Condi. I got this from the App Rating Library at NerdCon Stories and so looking at this book always just takes me back to that weekend. It was very fun, one of the few conventions that I've been to. It is hosted by John and Hank and John was there and I got to see him and so very good memories associated with this book that I only medium amount like. <laughs> like I got rid of the second and the third book because the series went downhill but I must keep the first because the physical book itself is very special to me. And that was it for my bookshelf time capsule tag. It was fun to kind of give a little overview of my shelves. I've only done one like full bookshelf tour on my channel and I don't plan to do one anytime soon because that is still to this day the longest video I have ever shot. But my shelves have changed quite a bit in my time doing booktube. But yeah, I just don't plan to do full bookshelf tours except when I purchase new shelves or move to a new location, which obviously does not happen very often. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my bookshelf time capsule. Thanks for watching. Remember, words matter.